All right, today we're gonna do another dirty pour, and we're gonna do classic colors, black, white, and gold. This ought to be pretty. Hang on. another dirty pour with a tray and I like doing trays with dirty pours and the reason for that is, is um, I want to have minimal movement once I've poured the colors down and sometimes with the canvas there's that possibility to keep on running over the edge which continues the pour, uh, continues the movement at least within this space and because it's a nice flat surface it's gonna have minimal range of movement as long as you have your uh, your surface nice and level so once all the tilting's been done it's cooled off a little bit it might move a little bit more but it won't move a ton so that's why I like that's why I like using them for a dirty pour so there's that in a nutshell okay so first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little clear down and smoosh it around like I normally do to give the color somewhere to move onto a slick surface and I thought today we would play with some colors that were a little bit more classic and what I mean by that is ooh, I'm gonna get a fresh glow because that's got some pigment on it and I don't want to smear the color on there until I'm ready for it so I thought I would play with some black and white um, and black and white is tricky because again, mud turns to gray and you want to have it gray where you want, where you want the gray, but I also want black and white as well. So that's where the tricky part is. And I thought I'd also introduce another classic color and put some gold in there as well. So, I'm pushing the clear almost to the edge. In fact, I probably got a little bit too much clear here. So, what I'm going to do is literally scoop up big bits with my hand here and then scrape it into my cup. And that way I can utilize the resin because it doesn't need to be that thick. And I definitely have it on thick. I usually will do several projects in one sitting. Um, <laughs> so when I go to pour out the colors and stuff, I probably have enough colors for, like I said, a couple projects. So I think we are good there. Feels like it's, oh, let me try a little bit more here. Definitely need jiggle gloves again. I can put on that other glove a little bit later on. But not the super slippery one. Okay. So whenever you apply um, any resin, hit it with the heat gun just to get rid of the bubbles. That one wasn't too bad anyway. Okay, I'm gonna put this guy to the side, bring you down a little bit lower, and we're gonna make the cup for the dirty pour. Hang on. All right, usually when I do a dirty pour, especially when there's multiple colors, meaning more than probably two or three, I will go ahead and line them up almost in order as I'm gonna use them and fill them up in my cup. Now I've got my cup elevated so that way my camera here can get more in line and you can see the colors filling up. but. What I'm going to do here is I've got two different types of whites. They look very similar because they're a very cream-oriented color, meaning there's no glitter or metallics in them. One of them is, this is almost even hard to tell which one is which. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So this is stone coat base tint in this one, which will create some cells. This is a regular white paste. 
uh, with no additives or anything like that or glitter or anything. And this is uh, from Just Resin. And then I've got a metallic, a black metallic from Stone Coat. It's a powder. And then this is a black paste from Lores. So, so far, the only metallic in this or special effect is in this one. And then this is a special effect for cells. So, and then we have a bright gold metallic powder from uh, Just Resin here. And that's such a pretty gold. So, that's the colors we're playing with today. And could you back in the kiss here? All right. Now we go layering them up. Layering them up. Here, yeah, yeah. Uh, already, tongue is giving me issues. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of the stone coat, not a lot. I'm going to do a little, lot more with the uh, white paste. I want some cells, but I don't want them to overwhelm. Now gold is going to be our powerful color here that you're going to notice the most. And so I'm going to have to be careful with that one. Gold does take over. So you got to be mindful of that. And I'm probably going to do two, two layers of this combination in here. All right. This is the black metallic. And this is a black paste. So the black and white is our main dominant color, clearly, but the gold is our accent. This time I'm putting a lot more of the white base in there. So we should have an area where the uh, the cells are dominant. At least that's what I'm hoping. We'll see. Like I said, sometimes there's your plan, sometimes there's the resin's plan. Hopefully they have the resin has a good plan for us. All right, a bit more gold. And then the last time I had a lot more black. So this time I'm going to do less black. And I did a lot more white. So. But it looks like the white is sinking. So this ought to be interesting. I don't know what it's going to do here. Some colors are naturally heavier than others. All right. Bring you in. So you can see the cup. I want to show you the cup before and after I pour. So that's it right now. And as you can see, although all the white has gone to the bottom. So this is going to be interesting. Very interesting to see how this pours out. All right, let me put, get my stuff ready, and we'll get working on that tray. Okay, I'm all set up and ready to do a dirty pour. Now, if you notice here, I've got a little bit of a resin drip. It's clear right next to my finger there. And what I'll do is I'll just take a, a rag or a towel with alcohol, and I use 91% alcohol, and I'll wipe that clean right after I've got my pour all set up, and it's done, and it's ready to be put in my my curing bin so or my dust free zone that's probably the better way of putting that so that's like the last thing I do because even in the process of pouring this out and manipulating and working with other colors you never know if you're going to touch something and then transfer and you got to clean that up too 
So that way I do that at the last minute so I know I got all my cleanup done. So, okay. So this is how the cup looks after being sitting just for a little bit. And you can see it's got some little bit of gold bits there. And there's even some little dots there where it looks like cells are trying to happen. All right. So I'm going to do a very minimal type pour. In other words, a very slow close to it. So that way it doesn't go out in a skinny stream. It goes out in a wide band. And it pours most of the cup out in one little motion. I find that's the best way to do a dirty pour with resin. And it's not uncommon that I drag my cup in the resin that's already on the tray. But I think I just felt it. All right. Give that a moment. So we got some little streaks of gold in here. Little bits of gold coming up. You can almost see where it looks like a brownish color here. But it does a nice little, there's a little bit of a, a gray blend in here. But I'm okay with that. But I definitely have some white and I definitely have some black. So I'm happy about that. All right, let me heat this up. We're gonna move it around to get the edges. All right. Make sure I get this on camera. Yep. So I'm just getting right up to the edge there and we're going to rotate this around so we do that motion all the way around the piece. Sometimes you got to slow down because two points will hit but that point isn't hit, hitting yet so you just slow down a little bit on your angle and it'll catch up. And then by doing this We'll start to get a little bit of a cir circular pattern or a swirl that goes on on the piece as well. And I'm not worried if there's clear bits. In fact, I kind of like the clear bits because it also shows off the wood a little bit too. But they'll do a dirty pour um, where I have a lot of clear in there. Let's see if we can get that wood to shine underneath as well. We uh, had our kitchen redone a few years ago and we were fortunate to have a good friend of ours that does cabinet building. And I mean, he made these amazing cabinets uh, and the level of craftsmanship is just out of this world. But uh, he would always ask us, it's like, okay, what kind of color, what, you know, panels do you want? You know, what, what kind of grains do you want to see on the outside? And it's like, the more interesting, the better. We wanted, we wanted those imperfections because they always looked a lot more interesting than having it being almost completely you know, where the grains are all going the same direction and very, very almost bland, very mild. It's like we wanted those interesting knots and stuff. So I always thought it was interesting. So Hubby and I definitely share that love of, of wood. And uh, I also have a love of color. So I kind of have not quite a yin-yang, but definitely a white side and a dark side with a little bit of gold in here. Now... Since gold is my accent, I could go and paint a few gold lines in here. But let me hit this with the heat and see what's going to happen. Because I've got some cells kind of coming up in here. So I don't know...
Trying to get the piece to talk to me. Speak to me, piece. Let me bring you guys in for a close-up. You can see what I'm debating on. Okay. So we've got, yeah, so some of that clear area that I was talking about earlier. So we've got some nice blending going on, a little bit of um, gold here and there coming through. And I'm sorry, but dark resin is always gonna throw a lot of reflection. And you see how this gold is giving a nice little sprinkling? I really, really, really like that. And so that's kind of what the drawn line of gold will do to it. But I've also got some cells that are peering, like right in here. So more could pop up later because it is a dirty pour and it was kind of thick in some areas. That's kind of interesting. It's like a little ghost cell. <laughs> So it seems to be doing a lot more, a lot of solid areas, some cell areas, and sprinkling of gold. So a good combination. I don't know, I think I might draw a couple little lines in there. Not many. I'd rather go simplistic. But there's this, this nice little curl in here that I might play with a little bit. Let's see if I can pull this off. I'm literally dragging it through the resin. And this gold will, a lot of times will come to the surface. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, I know why. There's a big old chunk of resin on the end of that popsicle stick. That's why it was feeling weird. All right. A lot of times I'll reuse my popsicle sticks. Um, just put them out on a plastic tray let them cure up and it'll be fine for the next time. Okay. Oh, that does better. Alright, not a good line there. And yes, a lot of times I will hold my breath. Had too much of a drip look right here. So just by putting your finger in just barely, you can grab a little bit of the resin on the surface and then drag it so it breaks up the line. I'm gonna clean off my fingers here and I'll show you what I mean. So for example, when I first put that in, it kind of had a little bit of a blob. Focus. And just by running it through again, I kind of smoothed it out a little bit. Well, over here, I definitely had a blob that 
too many reflections it has a hard time focusing and it smoothed it out real quickly there and there all right there let me bring you in for a close-up and just have this go a little bit better here this is looking pretty cool I think I might try a black and white with a color. That would be pretty. Now, what color to do? You maybe like a lime color. That would look pretty. All right, so I'm gonna put this guy away so it can cure up, and I'll show you what it looks like in the morning. Later. All right, here's the next day on this piece. It is cured up nicely. I am super pleased with this. Those of you who love real elegant looking pieces, this definitely fits that category. Gold, okay. Focus. Gold has sprinkled all over the place. It's really reflective with the black and all that, so downside about resin especially with dark colors. But plus size, this looks really luxurious. All right, you guys, hit that like button and hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell. Get notified next time I put a video up. Later, y'all.